To attract money, you must focus on wealth. It is impossible to bring more money into your life when you are noticing you don't have enough, because that means you are already thinking thoughts that you do not have enough. Rhonda Byrne. Broke is a temporary condition, but poor is a state of mind. And if we do not learn how to control money, it will learn to control us. And that includes controlling your mind around the topic of wealth. So many people are walking around these days with an equivalent of a scratched record playing the same tune in their mind over and over and over again. But instead of that tune just being a little portion of a song, it's the subconscious mind chatter that is keeping so many people poor. Phrases like, I can't afford it, I'm broke, money doesn't grow on trees. I can almost guarantee that you've probably said some of these phrases yourself. I used to do it when I was really young as well. Sometimes these beliefs still sneak up on me a little bit, but I've had a lifetime of training to override this kind of language because I don't think it's serving in any way, shape or form. I learned very early on from the greatest minds in the world that language is extremely important because negative self chatter, subconscious chatter is like a cage. And in this video, I wanna show you how to stop living at the mercy of these damaging words in your mind. I just wanna address this quickly because there are probably people thinking that this is some hippie BS. <laughs> I have spent a lot of my time around really rich people or even above average people when it comes to their finances. And I can tell you that their choice of words is very intentional and their vocabulary isn't poor. So the choice is yours. Feel free to click off or you could just watch and maybe learn something from this because you can't make excuses and make money at the same time. So what's it gonna be? You must assume 100% responsibility for your financial life. If you're gonna improve your situation, you have to put the full burden of doing so squarely on your own shoulders. First and foremost, you must hold yourself responsible. Steve Pavlina. Hi, my name is Sorella Moore and welcome to this finance and freedom channel. It is so great to have you here. If you're brand new, I do recommend you subscribe because this is an amazing community and we produce videos every Tuesday and Thursday. So hit that subscribe button and also please like because a simple like helps us tremendously in getting the message of finance and freedom out to the world, which we believe is a human right. Secondly, we have a newsletter that people actually rave about. So if you want to find out what the buzz is all about, check out the link in the bio for the newsletter because Leon is the co-founder of Abundantia and he shares amazing stories beautifully written that are super informative and you're going to learn a lot so check that out and finally there's only a few days left of the pre-sale of our course membership combo on all things finance and freedom so if you want to learn how to take control of this area of your life check out the link in the bio because we have lifetime access for a huge discount and it's just a few days left of that this video I am super passionate about because I observe people a lot, especially the language that they use because I learned this principle so early on around managing the words that you use because they're like spells. Your mind is always there to try to serve you best and it will listen to the words that you're saying. And so many people have probably had the wrong programming handed to them during the formative years. So they just say certain things without realizing that they are literally programming themselves and their daily actions are reflective of the words and the thoughts that they have. Have. If you're repeating really damaging phrases to yourself, your brain is just seeking out confirmation of your beliefs anyway. So it's going to limit your opportunities that you see because you have told your mind that you are broke, you are poor, money is the root of all evil. Your brain, again, is simply responding to the commands that you are giving it. Second example, you know those people that for some reason they always have this really nice mind that always sees the silver lining in everything. They are very grateful for life and everything just seems to work for them. How does this always happen? You're just like, why? Oh, that's why they must have a nice mind because everything works out for them. What if the reality is that they realized that their mind was actually damaging their circumstances, they changed it, and therefore the external circumstances change for them as well. Because we also know all these people that constantly complain about everything. Nothing's ever good enough. They're super ungrateful and their life is a complete shit show. <laughs> I don't know what other ways to put it. Now, don't get me wrong. I know that there are some really crap situations that people are put into and it's not fun and it's not easy at times to think positively or see the silver lining beyond all of that. But oftentimes, if you have a more favorable perception of the situation and you are trying to find solutions, that's going to be better for you in the end instead of just sinking down into despair. So the way you think, the way you talk, 
is very important. Now, I'm going to give you some practical suggestions of how to retrain your mind in order to think more favorably, but I'm going to say it's not going to be easy because you are going to be creating new neural pathways for yourself. So it takes around, they say, 21 days in order to create a new habit, a new pattern in your mind, because all your mind always is just trying to find the simplest way from A to B. So let me give you some phrases, curses, I like to call them, that people use on a daily basis and what kind of phrases you can use instead, which are going to be basically get your same result, but it is just a better perception for you. It makes you feel a lot more abundant rather than a victim of the circumstance. So let's go. Whenever you stumble across a situation and you can't afford it because that's a genuine thing, instead you can say to yourself and say to your mind, how can I afford it? Or I choose instead to save at this moment, AKA you're not going to buy it because it is too expensive. But instead of saying you can't afford it, you're just going to say to your mind, I would rather save this money instead. See how much more abundant and productive that thought process is. Here are the most common curses people use on a day-to-day -day basis that keep them mentally and financially poor. Let's go through the list. It's too expensive. It costs too much. I choose to save my money instead. Money doesn't grow on trees. Lots of money comes to me easily and frequently. I use this phrase in my vision book since the age of 12. I let that sink in. Since the age of 12, I told myself this every single day. Try that for a while. I don't have enough money. I'm a great saver and I do my best every single day. Train yourself. Visualization is important of where you want to be. I'm broke. Money is out there. I just don't have it yet. Just like the beautiful Jim Carrey has spoken before. He's like, yeah, I am wealthy. I do have these things. I don't have them with me right now, but I do have these things and they are mine. I hate money. Okay, let's think about it. Imagine you actually want to be friends with someone, but you constantly say, I hate you. I hate you, but you really need that person. But I hate you. Would that person want to help you or be hanging out with you at all? Same thing happens with money. If you're constantly saying, I hate you, money's going to be like, okay, bye. <laughs> it's just energy. It feels your energy that you have towards money. So if you start saying, I love money, I appreciate money, I respect money. I'm going to make sure I show my respect towards money and the things that it's capable of doing, like giving me better opportunities, giving me the ability to travel, giving me health, all of these things. Money's not that bad, is it? What you can do if you are in a dire situation and you feel like money has done this to you somehow, instead, time for you to practice gratitude. Every single great person out there says it. Practice gratitude for what you have because it might not be a lot, but the more you are grateful for, the more you're going to attract things that you're grateful for. So, so start writing a list physically with your hand to paper, start writing down what you're grateful for. Don't just think it. You want to be writing down gratitude lists every single day. I'm so bad at money. I'm not good with money. Replace that with I'm great at managing money. I can never save. Replace that with I always have enough to save, even if it's just a little, even if it's like three cents, just put that in your savings account and prove to yourself, see, you have enough to save. I could never replace that with whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. Henry Ford. I never have enough to save. I always have enough to save, even if it's just a little. Money is the root of all evil. Firstly, this is misquoted and it's the love of money that is the root of all evil. I actually, wait, I have to show you. I don't believe this quote at all. <laughs> I really don't like this quote or this saying that people have around money. It's like, why would money be the root of all evil? Why would even the love of money be the root of all evil? So I, when I was creating my vision book, life book around finances, because I really wanted to be financially free. I wanted to control money. I found a quote that is much more suitable for this. Lack of money is the root of all evil by George Bernard Shaw. Honestly, I cannot justify this quote. I just can't. <laughs> I don't understand. How is the love of money the root of all evil? Money isn't going to change you. It already amplifies the person that you are. You can do so much good with money in the world. It frees you up to have so much. Money doesn't buy happiness, sure, but I'd like to have my bills taken care of even if I'm miserable, you know what I mean? <laughs> Lack of money is the root of all evil because money helps people to make great change in the world. Really important things can come into fruition if you have money, so no. Love of money is not the root of all evil. And if you need proof of this, because you don't believe that people with money are good, find people that are good with money and they are doing great work. For example, the founder of Charity Water, Scott Harrison. He's a gem. Money corrupts people as above. I'm not checking my credit card balance because I don't want to know. I've said this many times before on my channel. Money goes to where it is most respected and most well managed. If you don't even know what's in your bank account and you don't want to look, it's not a very good start. So even if you don't have a lot of money, but you're aware of how much you have, you are then in control of that money instead of it controlling you. So check your bank balance and take care of your balance 
by learning to budget and save. You need money to make money. I had no money when I was starting out business. Simply find people that you are interested in the field of business or whatever else you wanna get into and find examples of people that have never had money and never had any income or venture capitalism or anything infused into their business or their starting idea and they still made it successful. There are plenty of examples out there. It is more difficult to get rich these days. All right. Cool story. In 10 years time, you're gonna wish you started today because this is not gonna get any better. <laughs> I can guarantee you that. And I know that people that also wanted to create wealth 10, 20, 30 years ago, it also wasn't easy. So you can either cry about it or you can face the situation head on and say, yeah, it might've been a little bit easier to make money back in the days, but this is the reality right now. So that's what I have to work with. I would do something, but I just don't know how to. Figure it out, princess. <laughs> Find out who you can learn from that is gonna help you solve the problem that you have. One day I will, or someday. For example, one day I'll start saving. Tomorrow I'm gonna to start learning about finance. Tomorrow never comes. The best way to start anything is today. So if you're wanting to start to save, go to your bank account right now. And if you're not a very good saver, put $3 into your savings account. If you wanna learn how to invest, just try to find some sort of really fast investment for $3 and just watch yourself becoming an investor for $3. Congratulations, you just started your journey. And every single day, just take the tiny little steps in order to get you closer to where you want to be. Instead of trading $3 for an investment, you're going to be trading $30,000. It starts with the baby steps. So start today. Only greedy people want a lot of money. Money amplifies the person that you already are. So if you think that most people become greedy, but you might not become greedy because you're different, get rich and see what happens. Or at least have some money and prove yourself wrong. Be the example that you want to see in the world. People with money exploit as above. I can only make so much in my chosen field of work. Well, this is a very narrow old school way of thinking of when it comes to money making, a lot of people rely on their salary and that's it. And they think, oh, if I reach a ceiling because their ceilings and my salary, I can't make more. Let's just take an example. Say you're a yoga teacher and you make maybe 15 to $20 an hour for being a yoga teacher or like yoga with Adrian, who has 10 million subscribers on YouTube, you could identify a rising market, a rising tide on a platform that is rising. For example, YouTube, when she started, there was no one doing YouTube tutorials on yoga and she did it. Think outside the box. Also, I just want you to consider that it's not only the language that you think and say to yourself, it's also what you consume when your guard is down. And that often happens when you're consuming TV, Netflix, and social media. Rich people have small TVs and big libraries and poor people have small libraries and big TVs. Zig Ziglar. And lastly, from all of this, you do have to take action. The trouble for most people is they don't decide to get wealthy. They just dream about it. Michael Masters. When you're on the wealth building part, you can't just imagine yourself to be rich and that's it. You need a really healthy dose of reality and action taking at the same time. To reiterate this point, I actually used to work with Demartini, Dr. Demartini, who was featured in The Secret. I don't think I have to explain The Secret. If you haven't seen The Secret, it talks about the law of attraction and managing your thought process. One huge thing that they cut out, which Demartini was quite annoyed about for a really long time, he recorded a full section about how important it is to take action action to take action on your idea because a secret what is really great for is appealing to the masses and it talks so much about just visualize what you want and it's gonna come to you and that's it it's the end <laughs> what they fail to include because it's not as sexy and appealing if you say you gotta take action you want that Lamborghini visualize then get up and take action <laughs> That's it for this video. If you enjoy this content, please make sure that you like. Your simple like is going to help us out tremendously in getting the message of finance and freedom out to the world, a human right that we believe. Of course, don't forget the newsletter that everybody raves about, link in bio. And don't forget, few days left of the pre-sale of the course membership combo that we have. Just being part of the community is going to be really important for you because oftentimes a lot of us aren't surrounded by people that value wealth and they have this horrible language ingrained in their brain. So you pursuing wealth and wanting to become wealthy, they look down upon you. <laughs> so you need to be surrounded by people that are also interested in wealth building and they don't see it as an evil thing. They see it as a human right, which it is. So the course membership combo, it is on pre-sale for just a little bit longer, lifetime access for a hu huge discount. So if you wanna find out more, link in the bio and I will see you in the next one.